All righty, welcome everybody to Notary Stars. My name is Beth Hackett. In this video, we're going to look at a few notarial certificates. Um, we're going to look at acknowledgments, jurats, hybrid certificates, and something called signature witnesses. Strange one. Um, and this may open the eyes of a new notary and remind a seasoned notary to keep their eyes open. I just want to say that it's a very, very important aspect of your job to scrutinize your notarial certificates to make sure they're at least minimally compliant with your state. Um, most of the examples that we're going to use today are pretty generic, so make sure you check your own state handbook um, so that you're familiar with what types of acts you can perform in your state as well as what the required elements of your certificates are gonna be. Um, some of them can be pretty tricky. So we're gonna take a look at them now. So let me see if I can share my screen here. Okay, can you guys see this? Big enough? Good. Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. So um, the very first thing I want to address with you first is loose certificates. So even though we're going to look at um, acknowledgments and jurats and signature witnessing and those things, there are times when you have to use a loose certificate on a document. So you need to know when, um, when you can use a loose certificate or when you should use a loose certificate. So Knowing your own state guidelines are important in determining that um, because it might be a certificate that doesn't meet your state guidelines that's on a document and you'll have to attach with something comparable that's uh, allowed in your state. California has specific wording that needs to go on certificates, so sometimes they cannot use what comes already pre-printed for them. And we're talking general notary work and or loan signings. It doesn't make any difference, okay? Hawaii has to have a, a uh, certification statement on their certificates. So all of the other states above Hawaii that are sending documents to Hawaii, unless they know that Hawaii has to have that um, certification statement, it's probably not gonna be there. So Hawaii, probably does more swapping out of certificates or using loose certificates than any other state. Um, Florida, Florida requires nine elements to be present in their certificates. And sometimes a certificate that comes on a document might have 90% of what they need um, and they'll have to fill in the rest. So, you absolutely need to know what your state requirements are. Um, so you may need to attach a loose certificate when the document doesn't contain any certificate wording at all, and the signer would like for it to be notarized. So if it's general notary work and they say, I want this notarized, there's no wording on there, you're gonna have to have the signer choose what type of certificate they want, and you're gonna do a loose certificate. Sorry, I keep jumping the screen here. Um, you also might um, have a, need to use a loose certificate when the certificate contains an act that you're not authorized to perform. So something like signature witnessing, only about 25 to 30 states have this type of notarial act. The signer or receiving party has to choose what type of certificate that you can do um, in order to substitute for that type of, of um, certificate. And we'll talk a little bit more about signature witnessing. And that can be pretty tricky wording on a certificate to realize that you're looking at a uh, signature witnessing document. Also, I wanna point out to you really quick that you need to make sure that your loose certificates contain some type of information 
that connects that loose certificate to the document that you intend it to be attached to. So loose certificates, if you've seen the NNA loose certificates, at the very bottom, they have um, some information that they want you to fill out in order to tie those two documents together, the document that's signed and the loose certificate. And typically it's gonna be the name of the document, the date of the document, or the date of the signing if the document doesn't have a date, um, the number of pages, um, and maybe any other signers that would have been involved that you're not notarizing. So if it's a split signing, you might want to reference the other signer that's not in front of you, um, or a place to reference information like an escrow title number, if you're doing a loan signing, um, or some type of document file number, okay? Um, so another reason that you might want to attach a loose certificate is when there is not enough room for your seal. So You've got the certificate, it's complete, it's compliant for your state, you just don't have enough room to place your seal on that document. So in that case, you're gonna wanna attach a loose certificate. In Arizona, we've got a pesky uh, tax transfer document that never has enough room for a seal. And I've uh, had some people say they put their stamp on the back of that document. That's probably okay for title. They don't care, it's there somewhere. But I guarantee you in your um, notary manuals, it will tell you to place your seal at or near your signature. The back of the document doesn't qualify. It's not even on a certificate on the back of the document, okay? If you end up with a, a loan signing package that has a pre-printed certificate, but it's split, it falls onto two pages, cannot use that certificate either. That's another reason you would use a loose certificate, okay? So when you're conducting a split signing, um, where the documents are being signed by somebody first and then shipped over, to you to take to a second signer to complete that uh, loan document package. So they're signing in a different place at a different time. That first notary probably already used the certificate that's in that document package. You're gonna have to attach a loose certificate for your signer. Unless you get hooked up with a really savvy title company that accounts for that and will prepare the document package that way, that doesn't happen too often. Another reason that you might need to uh, attach a loose certificate would be if you've already done the certificate, it's gone back to your title company um, or the maker, whoever, and that comes back with an error on it. Um, so to make a correction, now you have to know what your state allows for a correction. Um, California, they cannot correct a certificate that's already um, been done without going back to the signer and having a new document signed. Um, Florida also restricts amendments to existing notarization, and they also require a new document to be signed. So you need to know what your state requirements are, what your statutes say, you can do to correct um, a certificate that has an error on it. Often we get calls from title companies saying, you forgot to stamp your certificate. Send me an APA. APA is code for all purpose and not acknowledgement. That's a loose certificate that is an, an acknowledgement. Some states we can do that. Some states we cannot. We have to have that original document back. We have to meet with the signer, have them re-sign, and then re-execute that certificate. Let's see here. Now we have some more reasons. Some states require that certificates be um, physically stapled to the document. Um, there's only a handful of those. 
that say, if it's a loose certificate, you must physically staple it to the document it belongs to. I'm going to caution you not to do that in loan signing packages. Absolutely never staple anything in a loan signing package. You do that once, they'll let you know. You do it twice, you'll never hear from them again. It is <clears throat> just purely not a good idea to do that on loan signing documents. Um, if the certificate is not substantially correct for your state and you cannot add just the missing element like a venue or a date or how you identified them, if you can't add that um, and have that certificate remain legible and neat, then you're better off using a loose certificate. But if everything's correct and it's just missing one thing, you can certainly write that in so that you don't have to go through um, the process of adding a loose certificate. If at all possible, guys, if you're dealing with recordable documents and the certificate isn't um, compliant with your stake, if you can correct that certificate so that it, it is compliant with your state, you're better off doing that first <clears throat> and um, instead of adding a loose certificate, if at all possible. And the reason is, is that adding that additional page to those recorded documents can cause an additional fee at the county recorder's office, and that might delay the recording. So it becomes one tiny piece of paper can become a big deal for a title company, okay? Um, another reason <clears throat> is a hybrid certificate. It's another type of certificate that's not authorized in every state. So you would have to um, attach a loose certificate in the place of that hybrid certificate. Problem is, is that it's half a jurat and half an acknowledgement. So now you need to know whether they want one of each or one or the other. So you will have to contact somebody to find out um, if you're presented with a hybrid certificate, which certificate they want. If you can't get a hold of anybody, like on a loan signing package, do one of each and send them back in. But make sure you strike that hybrid certificate that you're not able to use and write on it or print across it, see attached notarial certificate. Okay, there is one thing um, I was gonna mention, <clears throat> in most states, you cannot place your seal anywhere that doesn't have required minimum certificate wording. There's one exception to that. Michigan, it's either Michigan or Maryland now, I'm not even sure. Um, the exception there is when they're presented with a document that doesn't have any uh, notarial wording on it, and it's like a general notary um, type of work. Um, they can add, print in just minimal information, sign it, and stamp it. So it doesn't have to have the typical certificate wording that we see, um, you know, acknowledged before me or signed, subscribed, attested, whatever. It doesn't even have to say that. This has to have venue and some other minor information and a date and a signature. So um, Michigan, if you're from Michigan um, or Maryland, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, that's your exception, so. Okay, so we're gonna start right in and take a look at some acknowledgements. First, we have to know what an acknowledgement is and what it does. So <clears throat> acknowledgements, are formal declarations that someone has signed a document. It doesn't say when they signed it. It just says they signed it. So they do require personal appearance, but acknowledgments are not in any state, do not require the signer to sign the document in your presence, okay? So they can sign the document that morning bring it to you in the afternoon, and all they have to do is acknowledge that the signature is indeed theirs. That's it. So you need to know an acknowledgement does not have to be signed in your presence, okay? 
The certificate wording can be printed on the document, or again, you can attach it as a loose certificate. If that um, certificate is pre-filled, that's on the document and it needs to be corrected, strike the info, add the correct info, and initial it. You wanna always initial anything that you're correcting. If you're striking something to remove it, you don't have to initial it, it's a good idea. But if you're doing a correction, adding some more information, after striking something, you do have to initial it. So overall said, an initial on anything you're changing on a certificate is a good idea. Okay. Um, let's see. Here's our first example. And this is not going to be unfamiliar to you. But this is a standard acknowledgement. It's got the venue state of, county of, what, and this SS here. You're gonna see SS and to wit on some of your certificates. We don't even have to worry about what that is, but if you are curious, SS is Latin um, for salicylate. And it means in particular or namely um, and simply says this is the venue of record. That's all that means. This is the venue of record. So this one says, when we're looking at <clears throat> a certificate, we know this is an acknowledgement because I already told you it was. But when we are looking at a certificate, we need to train our eyes to see keywords. So the keywords for an acknowledgement in all 50 states is the word acknowledgement. So we're gonna look through this wording and we're gonna read it and look for those keywords. We're also going to, once we find that keyword, we're gonna to continue to read so we know what to fill out in the blank spaces and so that we know whether it contains all of the elements we need for our state. This one says, I certify that the following persons personally appeared before me this day each acknowledging, so there's that keyword right there, to me that he, she, they voluntarily signed the foregoing document for the purposes herein and in the capacity indicated. This little blank line here, even though it doesn't say by, this actually is where you're putting your signer's name. It does want you to date it. You're obviously going to sign it print your name and your commission expiration date. So guys, even though this may not be additional information that's required in your state, if they're asking for this information, you need to fill it out. Even if it's already contained on your um, notary stamp, they want you to fill out everything that they're asking for in these certificates. So, some attorney sat up in his ivory tower and painstakingly, probably not, put together all of these documents. They want the information that they want, okay? It's not, um, it's not that much of a stretch for us to reduplicate information that's already maybe contained on our stamp, okay? Here's another one. This is actually a California, Acknowledgement. And the way we know it's California is because California requires this little statement at the top of all of their certificates. One caveat for California um, acknowledgements for property, for real estate transactions, if the property is in California, uh, acknowledgements have to have that box, that little information box at the top. Um, if the property is outside of California for an acknowledgement, they can use whatever's on the documents. It doesn't have to be California compliant, okay? This one, we're gonna fill out the venue. The venue is something that's required in almost every 50, all of the 50 states. It wants the date on this first line before me. This is where you're printing your name. Here's a clue, a notary public personally appeared. So the name of the person who signed the document 
either in your presence or brought it to you signed and said, yep, that's my signature. They still appeared before you, personally known to me or proved to me on the basis of satisfactory evidence to be the person whose name is subscribed to within the instrument and acknowledgement. Okay, and acknowledge, there's our first keyword to me that he, she, they executed the same in his, her, their authorized capacities and that by his, her, their signatures on the instrument, the person or entity upon behalf of which the persons acted and executed the instrument. Holy cow. That's the longest run-on sentence I have ever come across. Legalese generally is. So it's a lot of words. <laughs> and by the way, guys, these pronouns, you may circle or strike, do ever, whatever you want to with them. Um, it's not a requirement. It doesn't invalidate the certificate at all. And we're probably going to start seeing those. These are reader assists. Initially, they were reader assist um, words in our certificates, um, and they're probably going to vanish here pretty soon. Um, this one, I could use this in Arizona. The only thing I need to do is change this penalty of perjury statement from California to Arizona. So to do that, I'm going to just strike through California. I'm going to print Arizona above that and then initial. So if you're just running through a package <clears throat> and you're not actually reading these certificates to make sure they're compliant for your state, um, you might also miss this penalty of perjury item as well. Um, Florida could not use this certificate. It does not have all of Florida's nine required elements. I'm going to go ahead and sign that stamp it, Florida has to print their name below that signature line, okay? California has to have notary public in their signature. So you can see there's different rules for different states. Here's another one. This one's kind of weird. No venue. It's okay. We can use it if it has everything else that we need um, to be compliant in our state. What we are going to do is add the venue across the top. So state of, <clears throat> excuse me, county of, and it says the foregoing instrument was acknowledged before me. There's our keyword. So we know it's an acknowledgement certificate. We do acknowledgements in our state. We're, we're fine. We're going to put the date in. There's our by. That word by is kind of also a keyword to let us know that the Signer's name goes on the next line. <clears throat> so we're going to write Betty Borrower. And we're only using part of that top line. We've got two extra lines here. Um, <clears throat> also not a requirement, but a best practice to just strike through to dis disable the remaining lines. And those all should be nice backslashes, but they didn't work out that way. So use your imagination. It's perfect, right? Okay. Our signature. Signature of person taking the acknowledgement. That's the notary. So I'm going to sign that. It does not say notary public. So I'm going to put notary public. Commission expiration date. And our serial number might be our commission number, or it could be our serial number with the Secretary of State if we are in a state that has a separate ID number. Arizona does. Don't know if California does, but I would not be putting my commission number here. I'd put my serial number. <clears throat> Here's another one. State of County of, that looks good. Certifier know that I have satisfactory evidence that, this is where we're printing our signer's name is the person who appeared before me and acknowledged that she signed the instrument and are authorized to execute this instrument as the trust of trustee of the Candy Family Revocable Living Trust and to be the free and voluntary act of such party for the uses and purposes 
in the instrument. So our keyword is here, all that verbiage, and our keyword is here. But here's a problem. If this was being used in, uh, signed by a California notary um, for property in Arizona, they can use this certificate except for one thing. California cannot have capacity in their certificates. This is capacity, trustee of the Candy Family Revocable Living Trust, where it might say president of XYZ Corporation. That verbiage cannot be in a California um, certificate of any kind. They cannot certify or have capacity in their certificate. So unfortunately, even though they could use this in California for Arizona property, they still can't use it because it's got this in there. But they could strike this and just initial it. Okay, so then we're gonna put the date in there, our signature, residing at, is gonna be city and state. Don't put your home address on here, okay? But commissioned in Arizona. Most of our commissions are statewide, right? And then our appointment expires. Our appointment is our notary commission. So our commission expiration date goes there and then we're gonna stamp. Here's another one. Here's one that would maybe be mostly compliant with Florida, state of, county of, foregoing document was acknowledged before me by means of physical apparent, physical presence or online notarization. So one of these two has to be checkmarked. There's the date. So the 26th of August, 2021 by, that's the name of the person that's signing the document who is personally known or who has produced Arizona driver's license as identification. Okay, signature commissioned in Arizona, appointment, commission expiration date, and stamp. So you can see that as you're going down through here, as long as you can pick out the keywords, it tells you what type of certificate it is, and then you should know what elements, if you can do that type of notarial act and what elements have to be in that certificate. This is just an example of a loose certificate for you, attached to and becoming part of name of the document. The document date, if it is not dated, you're gonna date it the day that you're doing the notarization. The number of pages and that does include your certificate another page, isn't it? And then some type of reference. Um, if it's in a loan signing package, you might use um, the title company name and file number. Um, I wouldn't put the lender name and loan number. That's um, probably exposing too much personal information there. So title company, <coughs> title company and file number would be great if it's a loan package because again they're the ones that are looking at it right they're the ones that are putting it together and deciding does this certificate go with this document okay here's an example from nna if you have an nna membership you can log on and download all of your state compliant certificates this one happens to be an individual acknowledgement, and I think it's Arizona, but it has all of the standard stuff, your venue, the date, the name of the notary, personally appeared, so that's your signer's name, um, how you identify them, and then signature. This is kind of a blank line here, so I always print my name. I like a lot of ink on my certificate and any other required information. So I might print my commission expiration date. I just don't like to leave any blank lines on anything, right? Stamp is gonna go over here. And then this is the additional information here. And you notice it says optional. It really should say required because obviously if you don't tell 
uh, someone what document this is intended to be attached to, it's going to end up being attached to something other than what you what you wanted. This one's kind of different. This is for District of Columbia. District of Columbia is a state all unto itself. Um, guessing they don't even have counties, do they? Okay. So their venue is District of Columbia. You're going to find other areas of the country um, where you're going to see county or parish or city or township. Um, and that's because they don't belong to a municipality, um, a county, that sort of thing. So when you're on Facebook and somebody says something that seems strange to you, don't, don't, um, don't whack their heads off because it, they may be correct in what they're trying to explain, all right? So here's the date by the signer's name. Um, names of other individuals, signature of notary, title of office. So here's, they want you to print notary public. There are some areas where the, um, a magistrate could also be a notary, but he's using that title, not his notary title. Commission expiration date. So they're telling you here on this optional information, that completing the information can deter alteration of the document or fraudulent reattachment of the form to a, an unintended document. So that's why we do it. So it should say required, right? Here's something a little bit different. It's also an acknowledgement, but it's for a partnership. So California, you don't even need to look at this because you can't do partnership acknowledgement or any capacity acknowledgement. Um, state of, date, name of notary, personally appeared. So the name of your signer, how you identify them, to be the person who executed the within instrument on behalf of the, they want the name of the partnership. So XYZ partnership, right? Signature of notary, any other required information. This is important for you to know. So if you can do capacity in your state or, or um, representative capacity, then you need to know how your notarial certificate needs to look. It's not just the name of the signer, it's who they're representing as well. There's another one for corporate acknowledgement, same stuff name of the person who is the signer on behalf of the name of the corporation. Attorney in fact acknowledgement. We get this a lot in our loan signing packages. Um, Michael Douglas is signing as attorney in fact for uh, Joe DiMaggio. Okay. So the person that appeared in front of you isn't who the documents are for. Joe DiMaggio is not here. So Joe DiMaggio's name cannot be in your certificate as the only as the person who signed the document. It's going to read Michael Douglas for Joe DiMaggio as his attorney in fact or AIF. And that's the way this is set up. This one the undersigned notary public personally appeared, Michael Douglas, how you identified Michael, and the name of the person that he's representing, Joe DiMaggio, right? Your signature, any other required information. All righty, guys. Jurats is the next thing we're going to look at. We're doing the same thing. We're looking for keywords in our certificates. And while it seems pretty elementary um, for acknowledgement, and you're gonna see for jurats as well, it gets a little complicated as we move on. Okay, jurats require personal appearance. So unlike an acknowledgement, a jurat, the person must appear before you, the document must be signed in your presence, and the signer must swear or affirm that the information in the document is true. 
Same thing, the giraffe wording can be printed on, the, on a document or attached as a loose certificate. That jurat is a um, statement from the signer that the content of the document is true. Okay, here's your first one. Same venue, there's that pesky SS that trips us all up and we wanna know on Facebook, what is SS? Nothing, don't worry about it. Here's our, here's our keywords, sworn to and subscribed. Subscribed is signed. Sworn to is swearing to a higher being. It could be sworn or affirmed. But sworn to and subscribed before me this date personally appeared these two people. Signature commission expiration date. It's okay for Arizona. We can use this one have to place him under oath at the time that we're completing the certificate. If you have 14 of these jurats in your document package, you're just gonna have to play whack-a-mole <laughs> because they're gonna be swearing and affirming on all 14 of them, okay? It doesn't say give him a verbal oath that he's gonna stay under oath for the entire signing. That's not what this says. It says you must place them under oath during the jurat to affirm the document contents. Okay, here's another one. This one says sworn to, affirmed, and subscribed. So now that's, there's our keywords, and all of those words are fine. That's a jurat. Okay, same thing, date. Personally appeared. If there's two signers, you're gonna fill out one on each line. If there are not two signers, you're gonna disable this second line and only use the first one. Personally known to me or who has produced Arizona driver's license as identification. Pretty simple. Signature, state of, printed name. Boy, they didn't give us any room to do that. And commission expiration date along with our seal. There's another one. Oh. There's a two wit on this one. Two wit, everybody says, what is two wit? Sometimes it just says two wit. Sometimes it says two wit and it has a line next to it, like you're supposed to fill something in. Two wit just means that is to say. So you're gonna see two wit occasionally on jurats. You're not gonna see them on an acknowledgement, but you might see an SS on a jurat and an acknowledgement, but you almost will never say to wit on a jurat because to wit means in this place, there's the venue, in this place what I wanna say or um, precisely or um, here's my statement, that's what to wit means. It means that is to say. So here, that is to say, I am swearing or affirming and subscribed before me by means of physical appearance, online notarization, check one or the other, this 26th day of August 2021 by Joe DiMaggio, who is personally known to me, that would be nice, that would be a trick as well, or produced identification. Okay, so same thing, keywords. Sworn to or affirm and subscribe. So signed and sworn to a higher being or affirmed on your own integrity. Okay. Here's another giraffe. We know it's a giraffe because we've got sworn to or affirmed and subscribed, but there's something substantially wrong with this certificate. It doesn't have a date on it. It doesn't have a venue on it, and it doesn't have the name of the signer anywhere on here. So for me, I would not use this certificate because I'm going to be hand printing the venue on this day by and the signer's name, and that could get pretty messy. So for me, better option would be to strike this, see attached jurat, and attach a loose certificate. So I would not stamp this guy. 
Here's an Ohio Durat, and this is an NNA form. Pretty standard. Venue. Name a person making the giraffe or making the affirmation, right? On this date, signature of notary, title or rank, commission expiration date, and that same optional read required information. Okay. This one's different. This is a giraffe with an affiant statement. And I bet you're wondering what's the difference and when would I use this one? This one is probably more for general notary work. This one you could use either for loan document signing or for general notary work because it gives you two options here. See attached document. So if we're using it in a loan package, we're marking that. And we're going down to the bottom and telling them what the document is it's attached to. Or if you have your neighbor coming to you and wants to have you notarize a statement that they haven't written out yet, you're going to check mark this one and they're going to write their statement right here. Only true statements. I have never owned a 1975 blue Ford F-150. I have never sold a 1975 Blue Ford F-150 to anyone. Those items. Have them sign. If it's one signer or two, you're going to complete the rest of the certificate just like you would. But if he's not using these lines, you're going to disable whatever lines he's not using so that nothing, no other statements can be added to this after you've signed and stamped it. So that's what a giraffe with an affiant statement is. Oh, and they want thumbprint, so oh, optional. I probably would get the thumbprint. Here's a Florida giraffe, Florida's nine elements. There's one. Um, the type of the name or type of certificate, that's two, three, four, five, name of person, six, notary signature, seven, printed name of notary, eight, type of, of um, personally known or how they ID them, and then their seal is nine. So you see the differences between the states? And that same <clears throat> required information. Okay. Verification on oath for affirmation. That is still a giraffe. Different state, different title. This is a giraffe. Subscribed and sworn to or affirmed before me. So if you're talking to notaries across the country, or if you get a document from the other end of the earth, and it says verification on oath or affirmation, just look at the wording. Don't be too wrapped up about the title. Look at the wording. Subscribed and sworn to, you can use that certificate if you can do a draft in your state. They just call it something different. And then recently, in the, I mean very recently, like the last two years, these hybrid certificates have been popping up all over the country. A hybrid certificate combines two notarial acts, and typically those two acts are a jurat and an acknowledgement. So with a jurat, they have to be in your presence. With an acknowledgement, they don't. With the jurat, they have to um, take an oath. In an acknowledgement, they don't. So it makes you scratch your head and wonder why they're using a hybrid at all, why they just don't use the jurat to take care of the whole thing. Um, New York is not authorized to use hybrid certificates on documents affecting real estate. California 
is not authorized to use hybrid certificates. Um, Arizona doesn't specifically say that in our manual, um, but best practice for Arizona Secretary of State says, we don't have an act that combines two certificates. So no, we can't do it. Um, so it's really important to read your certificates very, very carefully. Here's one. State of, county of, before me a notary public appeared, signer's name, who first being duly sworn and affirmed by me did say he is the blank of blank and that said blank acknowledged said instrument. So let's look at our keywords really quickly. Sworn and affirmed before me and acknowledged. So if your state does not allow hybrid certificates, you cannot complete this certificate. It's combining an acknowledgement and a jurat. So the question would be, if this is in a loan signing package, you're gonna pick up the phone and call your hiring company or your title company, depending on what your connection is there. And you're gonna say, gosh, I'm really sorry. I'm looking at documents so-and-so. It has a certificate um, that has a notarial act that is not authorized in my state. Which would you like me to use? A giraffe or an acknowledgement? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna say giraffe because what they're looking for here is that it was signed in front of you and they did not take a note. That's what they're looking for. Acknowledgement doesn't say signed in front of you. So they probably want a giraffe. But if you cannot get a hold of anybody and you are at the table on the signing when you suddenly freak out because it's a hybrid certificate and you can't do them, do both. Send back an acknowledgement and a giraffe. Let them choose. Mark it in your journal as well as both. Here's another one. Foregoing instrument was acknowledged before me and who did take an oath. So this one doesn't say subscribed and sworn, but it's a little bit more plain English, if not sneaky. It says who did take an oath. It's an acknowledgement, but they took an oath. It's a giraffe. Same thing. Call them, find out which one they want. Otherwise, send back both. You're going to strike this and print see attached notary certificates, plural. Okay. More keywords here on a hybrid. Pretty standard language, although it gets a little um, legally. Acknowledged, foregoing instrument acknowledged before me on this day that they executed the same voluntarily and did or did not take an oath. Okay, technically, if we don't give them an oath, we can mark this one and use it as an acknowledgement. Just a technicality. If we give them an oath, then we can't use this because it says acknowledged. So Mark did not take an oath, okay? Here's another one. Foregoing documents was, that's bad English, acknowledged and sworn before me. Can't do both. They're going to have to choose one or the other or send back both. So we get into the habit of rushing through our signings and completing those certificates. And out of the corner of our eye, we see the word acknowledged. We don't see anything else. We stop. We have to read this. We have to look for the clues and the pitfalls um, on these certificates. Just because they were prepared by an attorney or a title company doesn't mean that they know the laws in your state. Okay. Alrighty. Last one. Signature witnessing or attesting a signature. So we've only got about 25 
maybe 30, lost count somewhere in there, uh, states that are authorized to do signature witnessing. So signature witnessing is similar to an acknowledgement that the document must be signed in the notary's presence. See, there's this hybrid thing. They're thinking if you can't do signature witnessing, we'll slip a hybrid document under your nose and if you sign that one and stamp it, we're golden. I think that's where that came from. Don't, don't hold my feet to the fire on that one. But hybrids are really very, very new. Um, and there's been a lot of pushback on, particularly on the West Coast for signature witnessing because we just don't do it. We don't have it. Um, it's kind of an East Coast, South East Coast thing. Um, so, so in my book, that's where a hybrid came from, and that's why it's just now popping up. Signature witnessing is kind of similar to that. It's an acknowledgement that the document must be signed in a notary's presence, presence, and it's like a jurat. It requires personal appearance, but without the oath. Okay, so an acknowledgement doesn't have to be signed in front of us. A jurat does, but signature witnessing is kind of like a jurat without an oath. So what is it? It's not really an acknowledgement, and it's not really a jurat because we're not giving them an oath. It's kind of a somewhere in the middle. They use it when it's imperative to establish when the document was signed, and that's going to be Signature witnessing states, Georgia and South Carolina and some of those others, right? Um, the main difference is that you witness the document being signed and you don't give them a notice. It's kind of weird, but that's what that is. Those are a little bit more difficult. Um, they're sneakier about how they huh, set up their certificates. So California, Arizona, Florida, Texas, among others, are not authorized to perform signature witnessing. So let's take a look at that. The key word that you're looking for, and this isn't a hard and fast rule, but often the key word in a signature witnessing certificate is the word attested. Okay? Attested means provide or serve as clear evidence of. So it was evidence before me, signed as evidence before me. Attested is your keyword when you're looking for signature witnessing certificates. Again, the venue and all of the other elements have to be there, regardless of whether you can do signature witnessing or not. The instrument was signed and attested before me this date by the person above, described as Granner, and then the date. So if it says attested, you probably can't do it if you don't have signature witnessing as a notarial act in your state. Let's look at another one. Same thing, venue, we got a date before me, notary name, name of the signer, who signed the above referenced instrument in my presence and who proved to me on the basis of satisfactory evidence name is subscribed within the instrument. Okay. And then we've got acknowledged. So you got to keep reading. So acknowledged in my presence or signed in my presence. That's not an acknowledgement. That's signature witnessing. Cannot use this certificate. In these cases where you have um, a signature witnessing certificate and you are not able to do it in your state, this definitely is a call to the title company. They need to tell you what they want and it almost always will be a giraffe again because a giraffe's the one that says you have to do it in my presence. Regardless of whether you take an oath or not, you have to be here and sign it in front of me. So if we have to make a substitution on a certificate, it's a call to find out which one they want, even though we know it's probably going to be a jurat, we can't choose for them, right? They have to tell us. All righty. 
Here's another one, state of county of. The foregoing document was signed or attested before me. Signature witnessing. Can't do it in about 40 states, or I mean 30 states in the US. Here's another one, and this one's kind of tricky. Um, I, the notary's name, undersigned notary public in the state of Arizona, county of Maricopa, hereby certified that June borrower personally appeared before me and subscribed to the within instrument and acknowledged the same. So before you, subscribe to the document and acknowledged the document. Signature witnessing. Doesn't say they took an oath, though. Nope. In my present. This one's an incomplete certificate. Still needs the venue. But here again, the foregoing instrument was signed, acknowledged, and attested before me. Even though it has acknowledged, we get it trained to look for the word acknowledged, to look for the words subscribed and sworn. If it's stuck in there in the middle, we don't see anything else. We have to be really careful that it doesn't have something else in there that changes what the actual certificate is. And this one, this is our last document here, witnessing or testing a signature. Find or attest it. This is an NNA document. So if you're in one of those states, you cannot use this. Okay, so let me get my screen unshared. All righty, so if you have questions, hopefully you've been taking notes. If you have any questions, what I'd like for you to do now is just raise your hand and we'll see how many answers we can throw out there before we are finished. I appreciate everybody being here. I'm gonna stop my recording now.